now with the next speaker we have dr milesh garg from india so he'll be talking to us on combined endovascular supraorbital and middle temporal gyrus approach for extensive medial temporal glioma dr milesh hello hello am i audible yeah you are you can go ahead uh, the screen can be seen yes we can see you can make it bigger okay there you go okay good evening everyone uh, i'll be presenting about a unique approach which we applied in our case uh, when i was in bandani hospital for my fellowship about a case uh, which is uh, which was a 65 year old male who presented with seizures to us and a patient was no, having no neurological deficits the ct scan was done which was suggestive of an extensive lesion uh, a hypodense area in the uh, right temporal uh, lobe which was extending to suprasellar as well as infratentorial region in the ct scan you can see the uh, brain stem was also rotated medially as well as posteriorly mri brain was done which was suggestive of uh, a, uh, in t2 image uh, this was suggestive of hyper intense uh, lesion in the right temporal lobe which was extending to suprasellar as well as infratentorial lobe infratentorial region the pcom artery and pc artery were also uh, traversing through the tumor and mca was also traversing through the tumor uh, the t1 contrast image was suggestive of uh, 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 no contrast enhancement the, the dti was suggestive of uh, the pyramidal uh, tract post medially as well as superiorly uh, so just one sec so before uh, we planned our approach uh, just uh, we decided to go ahead and find out the literature what are the options which are available uh, the options which were available uh, were uh, transylvian uh, subtemporal subcortical as well as endoscopic there are various advantages and disadvantages associated with each and every approach the transylvian approach was uh, mainly associated with vascular injuries as well as uh, uh, subtemporal approaches have got Uh, in which we need to retract the temporal lobes as well as uh, they have got limited working space and there are chances of damage to the vein of labe whereas the subcortical approach are need larger craniotomies and dissection of temporalis muscle uh, the endoscopic advantages have got uh, the approaches have got advantages of minimally invasive being better illumination and panoramic view so we discussed these advantages as well as disadvantages with the patient and the relative and but certain tumors or certain lesions they require multiple approaches so we decided to go ahead and do endoscopic approach in this patient but this tumor was so extensive that it could not be removed with a single approach so we decided and go ahead and use endoscopic approach through the supraorbital keyhole area as well as through the temporal area through the middle temporal gyrus using a view side brain access system so this is the position of the patient uh, and our incision marks you could see uh, the incision was extending from the supraorbital notch uh, uh, on the right side towards laterally up to the margin of the eyebrows uh, the frontalis muscle as well as corrugator superciliae and temporalis muscle were retracted dissected and uh, uh, a small burr hole was made or at the margin of the uh, over the keyhole area and uh, the craniotomy of around 3 into 1 cm was made uh, on opening the dura the frontal lobe was retracted and we were able to visualize the tumor in the subfrontal area as well as suprasellar area the tumor in the subfrontal area was dissected and uh, removed with the help of suction because the tumor was soft and uh, soft in consistency we were able to easily remove and dissect the tumor uh, after removal of the tumor from the subfrontal area we were able to visualize the right optic nerve right ica and we were able to remove the tumor from the optico carotid as well as carotico oculomotor cisterns uh, and simultaneously another set of neurosurgeon 
team was operating through the temporal side a curvilinear incision was uh, made from in front of the tragus going superiorly and posteriorly over the temporal area uh, the temporalis uh, fascia was dissected and with the help of navigation guidance we marked the site of our craniotomy and a small craniotomy of around 2.5 to 3 cm was made under navigation guidance uh, the dura was opened over the middle temporal gyrus in the uh, curvilinear fashion and a small corticotomy of around 2.5 uh, 1.5 cm size was made over the middle temporal gyrus a uh, view side brain access system was inserted and this is our or setup with uh, two set of neurosurgeons operating simultaneously the keyhole surgeon operating over the keyhole area and another surgeon was operating through the uh, temporal lobe over the middle temporal gyrus using the view side brain access system so this is through the view side brain access system uh, the view side you can see it's a totally transparent uh, uh, instrument which is uh, made up of uh, carbolic uh, stuff you can see the temporal lobe uh, uh, clearly through it and the tumor which was dissected and sucked after removal of the tumor from the uh, from the temporal lobe we were able to visualize the tentorium the tentorium was then uh, coagulated and uh, it was cut uh, it was cut behind the uh, fourth cranial nerve the tumor uh, in the infra tentorial region was again dissected and removed in bits and pieces under navigation guidance and this is at the end of the procedure through that side the closer part and this is the post op ct uh, the midbrain which was uh, being pushed uh, medially as well as posteriorly came back to its uh, normal place and the gross total resection of the tumor was done this is our patient which was uh, having no neurological deficit in the post op period uh, now coming to the discussion part why we specifically used endoscopy in this particular patient because endoscope has got better illumination better visualization and panoramic view uh, it needs a small access corridor regardless of the tumor size whereas in microscope we need to have a, a access corridor which depends upon the size of the tumor uh, we didn't have to use any retracted device in this whereas in microscope retracted device is usually used uh, but the, there are various advantages of microscope over endoscope also which we need to take into consideration depending upon the case to case like there is no blind area in case of microscope there is a blind there is a blind area behind the instruments in case of endoscope uh, the orientation does not change in microscope whereas in endoscope we have to uh, make sure that uh, we have to hold the instruments properly camera properly so that the orientation does not change and there is a very small space in endoscope uh, uh, which uh, endoscopic view which usually gets obstructed while we are using the instruments so this is again a pictorial representation of uh, the uh, size of the craniotomy or size of our approach uh, there are various advantages of view side brain access system which also i have mentioned uh, like it does not adhere to the brain tissue there are clear walls which visualize uh, which allow visualization of the surrounding structures elliptical ports allow bimanual dexterity the there are bevel tips which allow refined placement during surgery it, it is a tubular shape uh, instrument which e allows even distribution of pressure into the retracted brain tissue to minimize the trauma the distal open there is a distal opening in the introducer which allows access of csf and blood to flow through the uh, its insertion sites uh, it is made up of non conductive material which is important when using a electrocautery during tumor resection uh, the distal opening at the end does not reflect light which is very important like in many retractors uh, the distal opening reflects light so it does not allow the the surgeon to observe the tumor surface as well as vessels in that area so there are chances of vascular injury and normal brain tissue in that case so which is avoided in this and uh, these are uh, the locations which can be accessed assist uh, after supraorbital craniotomies that was regarding the view side brain access system so the different regions which can be seen by view side uh, the by supraorbital craniotomy ipsilateral are orbital roof cranial 1 2 3 4 anterior and posterior cranial processes roof and lateral wall of cavernous sinus basal frontal lobe gyrus rectus sylvian fissure anteromedial temporal lobe uh, then these vessels can also be seen 
in the midline crista galli olfactory groove planum sphenoidal tuberculum cellae lamina terminalis anterior third ventricle pituitary stroke and interpedicular fossa ek ek anterior communicable vein artery distal basilar artery and perforators can be seen very well through this so the indications of using supraorbital keyhole are uh, aneurysms of the anterior circulation except that of distal anterior cerebral artery as well as it, it should not be used in uh, uh, <coughs> anterior uh, acom artery which is aneurysm which is projecting posteriorly as well as superiorly and as well as the aneurysms which are beyond the genu this will not be visualized mc aneurysms so for high position basilar bifurcation and basilar superior cerebral artery aneurysms tumors of the anterior cranial fossa and sphenoid ridge pathologies of the cella and supracellular region also so coming to the advantages of our approach per se is it lead to small operative wound the operative duration was also very small compared to such a large tumor which require in craniotomy uh, in microsurgical approach is usually required 5 to 6 hours we were able to complete the operation within 3 hours there was no intraoperative blood transfusion there was rare occurrence of post operative epidural hematoma usually in this particular case because the, the craniotomy is small there is it leads to negligible damage of temporalis muscle less wound related pain and early return to work in normal life and but there are various disadvantages which we have to take into consideration like uh, there is a long learning curve it is difficult to remove uh, heart tumors with this particular approach there is a reduced maneuverability of the instruments because of the small space and risk of prolonged or permanent palsy of frontalis muscle if the incision uh, extends in case uh to more than 1 to 3 cm so we have to make sure that the incision line should be in the uh eyebrow in the eyebrow or just above that it should not go beyond thank you very much any questions so yes i have a question uh, you mentioned about uh, well congratulations for the very nice uh, operations you showed uh you mentioned about uh, the learning curve actually i i am as a uh, person who likes uh, neuroendoscopy i would really like to know how long does it take uh to a surgeon to to get the experience to remove uh, tumors uh, in this way and second question uh, is related to um more hard tumors which is actually more difficult to remove do you do you also use uh, ultrasound aspiration aspiration or what other tricks would you suggest to to remove uh, such kind of tumors uh, sir i'll answer the second question first because the ultrasound aspirator usually if the tumor is hard or firm ultrasound aspirator would be required uh, but in our case uh, we specifically opted for this approach because the tumor uh, we was suspecting it to be uh, soft rather than firm rather than hard in consistency so we need not require ultrasound aspirator in our case but if the tumor is hard it is going to take uh, the use of ultrasound aspirator and regarding the first question uh, uh, it takes a long uh, long learning curve especially i think dr vijay parihar is also online Uh, he'll be able to answer because dr vijay parihar is uh, from uh, jabalpur uh, medical college in uh, india so he is uh, very well experienced and his whole center is doing lot of neuroendoscopy so this was a very unique case uh, which was done at bantane hospital when i was posted over there during my uh, fellowship so uh, there are experts in each and every field as you know so i suppose he'll be a better person to answer dr vijay are you able to hear us dr parihar vijay not listening so okay maybe we can ask uh, his okay he's here i think no no he's not able to hear not, not here okay maybe he can comment later about this but it uh, take, it does takes a long learning curve because uh, yeah. Uh, as far as what i have seen uh, uh, there are different people in different fields who are expert in their own particular field so uh, so it probably will take 3 to 4 years to get trained in a particular uh, neuroendoscopy doing keyhole as well as you said doing access system 
if one is uh, and we need to have cases lot of cases to if so that is very important thank you so i believe much. i believe i believe okay thank you thank you so much other, other questions to dr nilesh